blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchased of God. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Good morning, everybody. Today we celebrate his mass, St. Pius Petra Selina, priest. You know who he is? Exactly. This is priest of famous, famous St. Padre Pio. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us ask God's mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who by a singular grace gave the priest St. Pius a share in the cross of his son, <clears throat> and by means of his ministry, renewed the wonders of your mercy, granted through his intercession, we may be united constantly to the sufferings of Christ, and so brought happily to the glory of the resurrection, we ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the beginning of the book of the prophet Haggai. On the first day of the sixth month, in the second year of King Darius, to the governor of Judah, Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and to the high priest Joshua, son of Jehozadak. Thus says the Lord of hosts, this people says, the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Then this word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai, to the governor, excuse me, thus says the Lord, the people says, the time has not come yet to rebuild the house of the Lord. Then this word of the Lord came through Haggai the prophet. Is it time for you to dwell in your own paneled houses while this house lies in ruins? Now, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much, but have brought in little. You have eaten, but have not been satisfied. You have drunk, but have not been exhilarated, have clothed yourselves, but not been warmed, and whoever earned wages, earned them for a bag with holes in it. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways, go up into the hill country, bring timber, and build the house that I may take pleasure in it and receive my glory, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord take delight in his people. The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people, and he adorns the lowly with victory. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Alleluia. The Lord takes delight in his people.
and the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Herod the Tetrarch heard about all that was happening, and he was greatly perplexed because some were saying John had been raised from the dead, others were saying Elijah had appeared, still others, one of the ancient prophets has risen. But Herod said, John, I beheaded. Who then is this about whom I hear such things? And he kept crying to see him. The Gospel of the Lord. There are two points, two things I would like to, you know, inform all of us here. First, of course, you see, you know, is the feast of St. Pius of Pietranilca, but popularly known as Padre Pio. You know, uh, Pius in Italian is called Pio there. So Padre Pio, Padre, of course, is, you know, father, you see, you know. He was born in 1887 in a small Italian village of Pietro Clina, something like in the small little village, see, of Greenville or whatever you may call it that time. And he joined the Capuchin Friars. Again, you see, you know, among the Franciscans, you know, there are different orders there. You know, you have the Franciscans who were here, you know, like Father Pat and all that. And then you have another group of Franciscans who were called the Capuchins there. And then you have another group of people, see, who were called the, uh, the third order there, so then you have the lay Franciscans there, it's different shoot the Franciscans, all stemming, you see, you know, from St. Francis there, you see. And he was in the monastery there, you see, at the monastery of San Giovanni Rotundo, you see. Usually, the, you know, where the Franciscans live, it's usually called, you see, a convent. Now, normally when we speak of a convent, we know, you see, where the good nuns live, you see, religious sisters live there, but they call them the con convent. And another kind of people, another order of priests or religious, you see, you know, who are contemplatives, contemplatives, they live in a place what is called the monastery, the monastery. You know. And you see, like priests, diocesan priests, you know, like us there, you see, myself, and you know, all, when we live, we call it, you see, a presbytery there, you see, presbyter. Presbyter means priest, or we call it in the, in, the, in the United States, you see, it is called the rectory there, you see, you know. Or in some places there, you see, in the missions, you know, it's called, like in the Philippines, right, it's called the parish priest house, right? Parish house there, that type of thing there. So uh, quite a few things. But the main point of Padre Pio was, you know, he had the stigmas, the wounds of Jesus there. That's the thing there, you see. That's the main thing there. And ever so often, you see, it will ooze blood there, that type of thing. But, you know, he was a great people, flocked to him, you see, because he was a confessor. You know, he spent many, many hours in the confessional there. And he was very, very compassionate. You know, he understood human nature. He understood, you see, what it was to be, you know, a person there. And above all, surprisingly, you see, you know, uh, because, you know, he, everybody flocked to him, you know, because he was very understanding, very kind. In the country, there were lions and lions and lions. Naturally, they say, you know, it happens even in the family. See, the Capuchins were jealous of him. His own brothers. Doesn't it happen in families also? Amongst among what you call brothers and sisters, it happens there, you see, among relatives and especially there. there. So the human nature always keeps on you know, cropping up, you see, his ugly head. And so they began, you see, what you call, you know, talking about him, you know, and they were telling lies about him, you see, you know, you know saying that he, see, he, was, he was creating a division there, see, he was looking for, you know, jobs, they're looking for work, looking to be popular. But in fact, you see, what he was doing was helping people there, you see. With the result, you know, with the result, you see, the superiors of Padre Pio 
believe the friars. Believe the friars because it's what you call gossip. Gossip. You know what gossip is, right? You see. Uh, and the gossip, you see, became so much, so far-fetched that, you know, it appeared to be the truth. Truth. With the result that his superiors forbade him to hear confessions. Forbade him to hear confessions. And he was, so to say, cloistered, you know, in another monastery there, all by himself, all by himself, you know. Here he was innocent, you know, and yet he was condemned. And again, you see, you know, he was following exam. He accepted this, this feeling. He, he accepted this hurt in his life and said, Lord, you see, just as you, you know, were accused, I accept this there. So I think, you know, in our lives, there's something to understand there, you see, you know, that we have to go through life there, and there are people, there will be people there who like us or don't like us. And people who don't like us, they'll do everything in their power to bring us down. That happens in families. It's very true, in families, you see, you know. You see, jealousy is there, you see. You know. So that's one thing there. Another thing today, you see, in the gospel is something to remember. In the Old Testament, you know, the, the prophets, you know, when they died, you see, they were buried outside in, in, in a, what we call a cemetery. <coughs> the, the leaders of the, of the temple you normally would be buried in the temple. Yeah. But no, they, they were buried outside. Why? Because before the resurrection, they believed that when a person died, that was it. And they didn't believe in the resurrection, you see. You know, with the result that they were scared that if they were buried in the church, in the temple, their bodies would rise there. Ghosts, you know, you heard about ghosts there, right? You know, you know ghosts there, you see, you know. Or spirits would come up there till Christ's resurrection. And Christ's resurrection there, you see, you know, as he rose. And now, as you know, there, you see, you know, when we go to Rome, you see, we go and see, visit the tombs, right? The people are buried, you see, you know, you know, the popes are buried in the Basilica of St. Peter there, or in, in the Cathedral of St. Paul outside. Uh, when a bishop, like for example, when, I don't know about here in South Carolina, I don't know about here, but if you go to St. Patrick's Cathedral, has anybody been there? The St. Patrick's Cathedral has seen that place, it's a big, big place there. You know, it's a beautiful cathedral there, you see. But right down there are crypts, there are different floors right down. And right down in the crypt, you see, are buried all the bishops there. The cardinals and all are buried there, you see, at that time. Very often there, you know, in, the, in my diocese of Rockwell Center, they're not buried in the cathedral there, but they're buried in the seminary chapel there, that type. They're not buried, you know, in, in the cemetery there. But again, see, a cemetery, again, is holy ground, holy ground, because we are waiting the resurrection. So I thought I'd just mention that to you there. It's very, uh, you know, our, our religion, our Christian, Christian faith, is so very, very rich, so very, very rich. And fortunately now, you see, you know, with the internet, you see, we can come to know so much about our faith, so much about our faith, so much about, you know, our religion. Like sometimes, you see, you know, uh, when I'm preaching and talking about the Beatitudes, I forget one or two Beatitudes, so bing, 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 I go into the internet there, you have a whole list, you see, of Beatitudes there, you see. You have the whole list of corporate works of mercy, corporate works. So the internet is great, but make no mistake, the internet is, can be terrible there. God bless you. We'll please stand. And our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, we pray to the Lord. That through the intercession of Padre Pio, good health may come there, we pray to the Lord. For peace in the world, we pray to the Lord. For all our migrants, we pray to the Lord. That justice and peace may dwell in the world, let us pray to the Lord. For peace in our homes, in our families, in our lives, let us pray to the Lord. For our sick, we pray to the Lord. And for our faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. 
God, hear these are prayers which we make always through Christ our Lord. Blessed be Lord God of all creation, for goodness we have bread and wine, to offer fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and become our spiritual food and drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive a favor, o Lord, we pray the offerings of your birth, that what we profess of devotion of faith may be ours through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just a duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, through your resurrection, you will reveal for us the body and blood of our Jesus, and we look for the day when we will join together in heaven. And so with all the heavenly choirs, we join in the unending acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna, Hosanna. Indeed, holy O Lord, the founder of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by saying, Lord, and spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time God betrayed and willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once for giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which he poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, death, O oh Lord, until you come, until you come, until you come again. Therefore, I celebrate the memorial of death and resurrection. We offer, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to the elders worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, each other spread throughout the world and bring us the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy and love. Welcome them with the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph's spouse, 
Blessed Apostles, Father Pio, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, <clears throat> we merit to be co to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now we pray, our Father. Dear us, Lord, we pray for every evil grace to grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be all free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and grace you grant a peace and unity according to your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you and your family. Let's extend the one of Christ, please. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, God, be all who takes away the sins of the world, blessed was called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, the body and the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Thank you. 
Graciously raise up, O Lord, those who renew with the sacrament all of us, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our, your, our life. We ask this through the Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Uh, just a reminder, tomorrow, as you know, there's no Mass, right? Friday. We had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless us. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thank you for coming. Enjoy the fall season. Praise the Lord. We're in Mass in our Make a Draw for Noise hymnals on page 20. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay from the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on.